All right, so let's just finish the last part. So we are going to look at inflation, deflation, and the price index. Okay. First, inflation, both inflation and deflation, they're going to hurt our economy. But let's see why. So inflation is going to make everyone poor. And why the inflation is going to make everyone poor is because your income may not rise with price. Hence, the inflation is going to reduce your purchasing power. So this is obvious reason inflation is not good, right? But then you may wonder, okay, why a decline in price level, which is deflation, also hurts our economy. It's because when there's a deflation, then the people is not going to spend their money. Why people are not going to spend their money is because they knew, so the money they hold is going to have more value in the future. And then they don't want to spend, they don't want to do investment. And then the economy is going to, in the, is going to enter a recession. Right? So in the, in, in, the, in the ideal world, we need certain level, like mild level inflation to smooth our economic transaction. Right. All right, so given this inflation, so now how we are going to measure our income okay. or wage. And then, so we find out, so it's better to look at real wage and real income. So real wage is a wage divided by the price level. And according to real income, is the income divided by price level. Okay. But then here, the crucial things is to understand inflation rate versus level of price. Right. So inflation rate is defined by the percentage change in price level. Okay. But then, so what is the price level? In previous chapter, we have looked at three different price index. One is CPI. Second is PPI. And lastly, we have looked at GDP deflator. Okay. So all of these three measures are price index. And then, so this price index will help us to calculate inflation. Here's an example. If CPI increased from 120 to 130, what is the inflation rate? And then the answer is, so just look at here, this is a percentage change for price level, right? So you may want to review your previous chapter to see how we calculate CPI. Okay. So just a quick uh, review. So CPI is calculated by looking at, is by looking at the cost of a basket goods. Now, okay, so you might want to review the previous chapter. All right. So if we look at actual data, the price level increase. Now this is a long-term trend. But then if we look at a percentage change in price level, and then you're gonna notice there's a fluctuation. Most of the time, our economy, there is inflation. In a very, very um, circumstance, we have deflation. So this happens in 2009, in a very deep recession. Other things you should notice is, for our, prior to 1980, the inflation is way more volatile. Or, so you, I should say after 1980, so the inflation is very mild. Fluctuate much less. I could look at right scale. So after 1980, so the inflation is around 2% for long term. But before 1980, so it fluctuated quite significantly. Right? And one explanation behind that is, so since 1980, 
so we have better monetary policy. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at the cause associated with inflation. So that explains on why we focus on the price level, or why the central bank trying to stabilize the price. First, there's a shoe leather cost, which is the increased cost of transaction caused by inflation. And how we understand that? So if there's inflation, price level rise quickly. And then once you receive your paycheck, what are you gonna do? Most likely, so you're gonna rush to the store to buy goods or service. Otherwise, your money received from your employer will lose value. Okay? And then this huge leader cost, that just reflects the transaction costs caused by inflation. If there's no inflation, and then you may not want to rush to the store to buy the goods and the service. Right? So you just do some unnecessary shopping due to this inflation, right? Here's an example. In 1985, the inflation rate is to 500% in Israel. And then people spend a lot of time in line at the bank to withdraw the cash, right? So you can see, so people have wasting their time within their energy to overcome the, the cause associated with inflation. So there's a second cause, which is manual costs. Right? Just imagine if you are a business owner, if there's inflation, everything becomes more expensive in terms of the ingredients you must purchase, like a gas, electricity, vegetable, fruits, meat. And then to make your business afloat, what do you usually do? So you probably want to increase the price of your dishes, right? So like in this background picture shows. <laughs> and then if you change your list of price, this is gonna have two costs. A direct cost, you must reprint your menu. Then there are also the indirect cost, which is you may scare away of your customer. Right? So this is called menu cost. So regarding to this direct cost, so given the technology progress, so this menu cost may decline. So if you go to um, some store, like a Best Buy or Furniture Mart, Nebraska Furniture Mart, and you may notice, so the price tag they had, it becomes electronic. So that just means, so they can instantaneously change the price without much additional cost. Okay. Or in other words, with technology progress, this menu cost may decline, right? But however, so the indirect cost will still exist, right? Because now the customer can easily compare the price, right? Third cost is called unit of account cost. So this is a cost arising from the way inflation make money a less reliable unit of measurement. And then the household or the business, they may not want to use the currency right? because it becomes useless. Like in this background picture shows, so this is, uh, this is uh, one note printed by the Central Bank of Zimbabwe. On the face is $100 trillion. But how much does it cost? Or sorry, how much does it worth? It's less, it's around like 10 US dollar. So in that case, this thing becomes useless. And then, so they may just abandon to you this currency. Actually, so that's going to force the central bank, but equivalent the government, lose a big revenue source, which is printing money. Right, so that's going to be a cost for the government. All right, so given the existence of inflation, so we may want to differentiate different interest rates. 
And the interest rate is important because that's going to affect household's saving decision. That's going to affect business investment decision. But what is the interest rate? Interest rate is a price that the lender charges for the use of his or her saving for one year. But also you can understand the interest rate is the reward you're gonna get by postponing your spending, by depositing your money. Now, given the in, if existence of inflation, so there's a nominal interest rate, which is interest rate expressed in dollar term. Like think about your mortgage. Now currently the mortgage rate is like 3%, but that's in nom nominal term. Meaning, so it's just in dollar term. I borrow 10,000 this year, and then, so I subject to um, 10,000, right, 300. I subject to a $300 of interest, right? So the inflation may change the real cost of this borrowing. If there's the inflation, and then $300 I own to the bank to service this debt may become less valuable. That just means, so the actual interest I paid is lower, but this reflects by real interest rate, okay? So the way we calculate the real interest rate is use nominal interest rate minus the rate of inflation, right? Okay, let's just use the example. All right, so if I borrow 10,000 from the bank, normal interest rate say is 5%. And so the inflation say is 5%. And then in nominal term, so I own the bank $500. So this $500 is used to serve the loan. But now because of the inflation, okay, and then, so basically, so the actual things are paid for the bank is 0%. Because right? the real interest rate becomes zero. Okay. Now let's look at this discussion question to understand the nominal versus real interest rate. So in this question, there are three individuals. Mary, so she expects inflation to rise 5%. Oh, sorry, so this is a different one. So there are two individuals. And she expects inflation 5, and she's willing to pay a range of 3%. Joe expects the inflation 5, and he's willing to lend if he receives range of 3. Now, if the actual inflation is 6, and the loan to nominal interest rate is 8%, Okay. Now the question asks you, who is glad to take the deal? So first we need to find out what is the real interest rate. The real interest rate is gonna be eight minus six equal to 2%. Now let's look at Mary. And she's willing to pay a real interest rate of 3%. Now the actual real interest rate is 2%. Okay, and then so she certainly she is like to borrow. Now look at Joe. Joe, so he's willing to lend at real interest rate three, but now the real interest rate two is lower than the real interest rate he's expecting. So hence he's not willing to lend. But B is not correct. Why? The reason he doesn't want to lend isn't because the real interest rate is nine, actually it's because the real interest rate is two. And furthermore, so Joe is waiting to lend if nominal interest rate is nine, okay? Because with 9% of nominal interest rate, minus 6% of inflation, that equal to 3%, which is real interest rate. So that's the rate he's willing to lend. Okay, so this is practice question. 
Now we have another practice question. Okay. So there are three individuals. They have different source of income. And now, so the question asks you how an inflation change affects their well being. Start with Sarah. She has a job that automatically adjusts her wage. Okay, so adjust with inflation. Now, suppose the rate of inflation is 8%. So what this means, this means, so her employer is going to give her 8% of raise in her salary. Hence, she's not affected by inflation. Or sometimes we call this inflation proof. Now, Bob, his employer is going to offer a 5% annual income increase, regardless what happens. Now the inflation is 8%. So that means, that means he's going to lose 3% of the purchasing power. Because his wage risk increased by three five percent, but the price is going to rise faster than his wage. So hence he's going to worse off. But certainly, if the inflation is lower than five percent, and then so Bob is going to better off. Now let's look at lost individual. Neil is retired. He has two pay. One is the fixed, which is 2,000. The other is social security of 1,000. So the social security is indexed to inflation, meaning inflation increase, and then so they get more pay. If it decrease, you get less pay. Okay. So the meal this situation is interesting. So his $1,000 is going to inflation proof, but his $2,000 is going to hurt by inflation. And overall, milk is going to suffer. All right, so this is what these questions. I believe the answer is in this slide. All right, so you can read this more carefully if you have any questions. Okay, other case study. Right. So in 1970, so American who took out mortgage in early 1970s, they realized their real pay is decreasing. This is because the American economy was experiencing higher than expected inflation. At some point, it's close to 20%. Right. So that just means as long as your nominal mortgage rates below 20%. And basically, so you just borrow for free. Right? So you can see, so the inflation has quite important impact on our daily life. Currently, the US economy is expecting some inflation down the road. Okay? And then, so that's going to have profound impact on business and households. Right. All right, so there are a few more things left. Now, this slide is going to show you how the inflation and the unemployment rate, how they are, can possibly link to each other. Okay. And then, so we have two parts for this growth. Okay. Uh, let's just start with here, January 1980. Okay. And so this dot, how we come up with this dot? This dot just plot the inflation rate and unemployment rate 
in January of 1980. And then so we keep track of inflation and unemployment rate over time. So this dot is going to represent the next quarter and then the another next quarter and so on and so forth. We just keep track in our economy until we reach August of 1987. And so if we look at this part, and in general, so what we notice is there is a nice but not perfect correlation between inflation and unemployment. Right? So this just shows the higher inflation, the lower unemployment. Or vice versa, the lower inflation than the higher unemployment. Right? But this trend not always perfect show up in the data. Like if we look at 1970s, it seems like so this, this relationship doesn't show up nicely. But overall, there is a inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment, particularly in the short run. And in the next module, Right? So we will have one chapter to explain why this negative correlation between inflation and unemployment show up. Okay? All right. Let's look at these fractures questions. So and then so we're gonna close this chapter. So you have been award a cost of living increase tied to CBI. The CBI has gone from 110 to 112. If your salary is 30,000, what would it be after CBI increase? So that just means your salary, which is 30,000, will increase with inflation rate. So it's gonna one plus X, which is the inflation rate. Right. So inflation rate here, X, is going to equal to the percentage change in CPI. It's 1, 1, 2, 1, minus 1, 1, 10, divided by 1, 1, 10, times 100. Okay. And then so we plug in this X into this formula. So that's going to give you an answer of B. Right. So I'm going to stop here for the new material. Okay. So now we have uh, closed this chapter. And we have also closed this module. So we are going to have a review on Tuesday. I'm going to send you a document, but actually this document should be on Canvas already. And then, so the next uh, Thursday, we are going to have our second midterm. Just a reminder tomorrow, so we are going to have another seminar. And again, so by participating in the seminar, you can earn bonus point. Thank you so much for your attention.